Man, oh man, you guys may or may not know this, but down here in South Florida, we're having a pretty severe gas shortage. And it's something that I heard about, but haven't really seen in action until last night when I was out. I could see, you know, different gas stations with cars just lined up and lined up down the road waiting to get in. I'll put up some dash cam footage for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. And on top of that, today, when I was coming over here to Miami Shores to make this video, literally every single gas station that I passed had no gas. And I'm pretty lucky that I have a little more than half a tank still in the Jeep. So I'm good to go for a while. Usually it takes me about a month to go through the gas. They're saying that over the next few days, you know, most gas stations should probably have gas again. But you already have people freaking out and hoarding the gas like there's no tomorrow and you know, like it's the end of the world. And I just think sometimes like, what's the end game with this? You hoard all the gas and uh, you got some gas until you don't. And then if it is the end of the world, you're out of gas. What good is the gas gonna do you anyways? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just kind of crazy the way people react to things sometimes. But anyhow, that's just one crazy Florida story for the week. But really, we have much bigger problems here than a temporary gas shortage because Florida, obviously has been having big problems with our property insurance market. There's a lot of news to cover with this. The first thing I wanted to talk about is how towards the end of this year, in October, the state insurance regulators, they just signed off last week on a plan that's gonna cost everybody in Florida who has any type of insurance, guys, extra, except for, I believe, automobile insurance, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So they passed a 1% insurance assessment. This was requested by the Florida Insurance Guarantee Association to cover the cost of claims. Insurers are going to collect this assessment from their policyholders starting October 1st, and they're gonna send the money to the Florida Insurance Guarantee Association. And basically the Florida Insurance Guarantee is a nonprofit that collects money to handle claims when insurers become insolvent. And we literally had seven insurance companies go insolvent in the past year and a half here in Florida. So basically how this works is the Florida Insurance Guarantee Association is borrowing $150 million in the short term to help pay claims. And then it's gonna issue up to $750 million in revenue bonds to pay off the short-term financing and to pay remaining claims. And the assessment will continue to be collected until the bonds have been paid in full. So you see cities do this all the time. They issue bonds to pay for things over time that they don't have the money for. And little by little, they raise taxes on people to cover the costs of those bonds. This is pretty much the same thing, only with insurance instead. And this is mainly going to cover insurance claims from hurricanes dating all the way back to Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Michael, and Ian. Like I was saying earlier, this applies to all different types of insurance that you might have in the state of Florida. And apparently the only type of insurance that it's not going to apply to is auto insurance. But maybe if you have a life insurance policy or a renter's insurance policy, if you pay for insurance in the state of Florida, it's probably gonna go up by at least 1%. And you can say, oh, that's not a big deal, 1%. But listen, guys, we have already been getting hammered with insurance increases here, which I'm gonna cover here in depth, covering some different people's stories and how people have been affected by this, because it is an insurance nightmare that we're going through here. And if anything can take down Florida's housing market right now, I believe it is homeowner's insurance, because this is the biggest wild card that people are facing right now when it comes to owning a home. And a lot of people simply cannot afford the increases that they're getting hit with right now. So let's get into some real life examples of how people are actually being affected by all this because it's worse than you think. There's a story of one woman who owns a house that actually she inherited from her mother. This lady used to have universal insurance. And when she had universal, her premium was about $3,200 a year. Well, now for the last two years, she's had to have citizen's insurance because she couldn't get the insurance through Universal anymore. Well, now that she's with citizens, she just got a notice in the mail for her escrow account 
for her mortgage company because they collect the mortgage, the taxes, and insurance in many cases, and they collect the insurance every single month from you, okay? And the premium went from $3,200 with Universal up to $9,700 a year with Citizens, okay? Which means she's short an extra $4,000 out of her escrow account that she needs to catch up on right now. Now this lady only makes $15 an hour and her husband works too, but clearly you can see when you're only making that kind of money, how a huge increase like this can really hurt you. I mean, this is not good. And she's lucky enough that her son actually rushed to her aid and helped her pay this so she didn't fall behind and become delinquent on her mortgage or anything like that because that's the last thing that you want to have happen. And also this lady had some luck as well because she has a friend who's an insurance agent that decided to look over her policy for her and she noticed that the citizen's insurance did not take into account her windows or the wind mitigation inspection and that actually brought down her premium to 4238. So she is really lucky, guys. I mean, she's she literally cut the bill in half because her friend looked over her policy and noticed some things missing. So right away, the first takeaway from this story is when you're getting insurance on a home, you need to take matters into your own hands. You have hurricane-proof windows, make sure that's listed on the policy. Get the wind mitigation inspection done. That's like a couple hundred dollars through a property inspector and it can save you thousands on insurance as you can see here. Now it's safe to say that this woman dodged a bullet this time around, but now she's on edge because she doesn't know what the future is going to bring in terms of further increases because it seems like this situation is probably going to get worse before it gets better if it gets better you know last year the state made all kinds of changes to the way insurance is handled here in hopes to try and make more insurance companies come back to the state and offer more policies and while that is starting to happen a little bit it's definitely not enough to bring premiums down at all yet now here's a story about a guy that bought a condo in Naples, Florida 35 years ago. This guy has been the building president. He's been on the board of the condo a few times. He has experience dealing with the insurance premiums that the building has to deal with. And like I shared with you guys, that has been the number one reason why the HOA fees in my condo increase because the insurance bill basically doubled from 2022 to 2023. Now they live in a 66 unit condo complex and four years ago the property insurance there was $80,000. That's for the entire complex guys. Now it's over $300,000 for the year. So the quarterly dues, they pay dues quarterly there, went from $2,800 last year up to $3,600 this year. But one thing to keep in mind is this only covers the common areas. So this $3,600 a year is their HOA dues, okay? That covers the insurance for the complex, but they still have to pay for their own homeowner's insurance policy within their walls, okay? And they pay an additional $4,000 a year for that. Uh, that sounds very expensive. I mean, to put into perspective, my place is pretty big also, a little over 1,500 square feet, and I pay, you know, a little under 1100 guys so it's way less than what this guy's paying so i don't know how big his condo is but uh, sounds like he's paying a lot but obviously the problem is when you have insurance increases like this not everyone can afford it and you go to like a retirement community area like this like naples florida for example and they get hit with these big increases all of a sudden some people are forced to sell or to rent the place out in an event like this because they just can't absorb that extra cost and these guys are actually retired living in this condo and it says here that it's a little over 2,000 square feet so these guys are really getting hammered on their own individual homeowners insurance policy and they're on a fixed income and they have to start cutting back on different expenses in order to pay for this increase now have one that's sold well that's kind of a lie because it's not actually sold yet the property is still pending they listed it for sale back in january for 1.5 million and they got a contract recently but the property is not sold but 
because the new buyer, let's say they're paying roughly 1.3 million for this place and a property just down the street sold for 1.2. So let's assume 1.3. And the current owner is paying $6,000 a year in property taxes. Well, that's on a $261,000 assessed value. The new owner's assessed value is gonna be much higher. And based on a 1.8% property tax rate, which is kind of the going rate for this area, the new owner's probably gonna be paying somewhere between 20 and $23,000 per year in property taxes. And yes, you heard me, that number is probably going to be accurate. Now this couple thinks that uh, the state needs to do more in order to figure out this insurance situation. They think they need to do things like have subsidies for low or middle income households, things like that to basically help people, you know? It's interesting because everyone's answer to everything, and no offense to this retired couple, but it just seems like the first thing that everyone jumps to when people run into trouble is, oh, give me more free money. And how do you think our government in general and our country is so messed up, guys. It's from this thought exactly, like, oh, just give us more free money and it's all gonna be better. No, it's not. This just makes problems even worse. The money doesn't solve the issues. It just makes the problem worse because it becomes a cash grab for everybody in between. The insurance companies, the roofers, the contractors, everybody who's gonna get a piece of that money eventually knows that the free money is being given out. So, hey, let's uh, rip everyone off. You know what I'm saying? Now this house here is an attempted flip. We've walked past this place a couple times before. They bought it back in September last year for 1.1 million, tried flipping it for 1.7, didn't work, also tried renting it, couldn't get it rented, and at the end of the day, they couldn't get anybody to buy or rent this house, and their property tax bill is also going to be much higher because as you see, when they bought this house in 2022, they were paying $7,700 a year, but that was based on a $332,000 assessment. And since they paid $1.1 million for the property, they likely too have a roughly $20,000 a year property tax bill, which unfortunately doesn't reflect yet here, but it'll be interesting to see once it does. Now there's a story of another woman that spends a ton of her money on pet food and supplies because she has like a million cats and dogs and all this stuff. And uh, she has a three bedroom, two bath house, 2,150 square feet. Up until recently, her cost of ownership for this house has been pretty consistent according to her. And this is important because she lives off of disability benefits. So her policy with frontline insurance, which includes a zero deductible hurricane policy, went from roughly $2,200 for the year to more than 3,800. And the insurance provider increased her replacement costs of her home and contents. She went through a bunch of trouble and in the end she was able to get the bill down by $500 for the year. Honestly, this woman's lucky that she's even able to get a policy because she has a 17 year old roof. And right now, pretty much no insurance company will write you a new policy with a roof that old. She spent a hundred bucks on an inspection for the roof and they claim that roof has anywhere between six to eight more years left of life on it. And I'm very surprised that her insurance company even accepted this because a lot of times they just, they don't care. They're like, yeah, you gotta get a new roof, that's it. So now she's all worried about when she's gonna have to replace the roof because it's probably gonna be sooner than later. I doubt they're gonna let it go this full six to eight years. And with someone like this that is pretty much just living off of disability, probably isn't gonna be able to pay for stuff like that. And this is why I was saying, guys, I think that this situation alone, if anything can crash the Florida housing market right now, is this. Because people that live here and just work regular jobs and make an average salary, a lot of times cannot keep up with these increases. You might say some of these people have had it too easy for too long and uh, you know it's time to pay the piper. Well, that's exactly what's happening. Even though these houses may not be short sales or foreclosures yet, they easily could become those type of sales if people fall behind on different payments because they're trying to make their insurance premium. And you also have a situation where people might be forced to sell their homes because they simply cannot keep up with the increasing cost of ownership of these properties. And this same lady, her mom is 83 years old. She has her own house and 
she can't afford the new $4,200 insurance bill that citizens just sent her and she's packing it up and selling exactly what we just talked about and she lived in the house for 36 years now she's going to be looking for a townhouse to rent just like we talked about the other day about people that choose to rent versus buy I mean what do you guys think you think this is a legitimate reason to rent instead of own okay you have these insurance increases with ownership you have the property tax increases both of which are basically outside of your control and if you rent you are at the mercy of how much the landlord's going to increase the rent so there's really no right answer to all this guys like no matter if you own or you rent you can get slammed with unexpected increases and the days of stable home ownership I think are quickly fading away. Now if you think all that's bad, here's a guy in Cape Coral, Florida that cannot even get an insurance policy on his house. And this probably has to be the worst situation to be in when it comes to insurance because if you have a mortgage on your property, you have to have insurance, otherwise you're in trouble. And on top of that, if you have a policy that lapses when you go to get a new policy it's going to cost you way more because they look at this as a negative normally citizens insurance here in florida is the insurer of last resort and they can insure people that can't get insurance from a private insurance company well this guy cannot get citizens insurance because the value of his home is now too high well everyone has been you know celebrating this crazy housing market especially here in florida how much properties have gone up in value and now what used to be a blessing has become a curse because you literally cannot get insurance because your home is worth too much imagine that so what happened with this guy is rewind a little bit when we had hurricane ian blow through here about six months ago he made a claim of the roof needing to be replaced and also a torn down pool cage as well as some other miscellaneous damage to the home and an adjuster came out after weeks by the way for that to happen so you're just sitting there with this damaged home imagine after the hurricane you know maybe water pouring in through the roof who knows and in the meantime you're waiting for an adjuster to come out and give you permission to fix your own house but anyways they took a look at it and they said well we're not going to pay anything because this all the damage here that's that we're seeing is less than the $18,000 deductible that you have on your policy. And then get this, this guy goes to a public adjuster that he hired to come out and give a second opinion, and the public adjuster said, wait a minute, your house needs $300,000 worth of repairs. So he submitted that to his insurance company, which was United Casualty Insurance, and then guess what happened? they went insolvent because that was the most recent insurance company to go insolvent a couple months ago when we talked about this. So now his claim is in limbo and it sits with the Florida Insurance Guarantee Association, this same nonprofit company that is collecting this assessment and that money that they're gonna be collecting starting in October is going towards paying claims like this guy's right here that were not covered by their insurance carrier okay so everyone in florida is going to be paying for this guys like if you think that this doesn't affect you it does i don't care if you're renting or if you own a place if you pay for a roof over your head this affects you because if you own your insurance goes up if you're a renter and you have renter's insurance your insurance goes up if you don't even have renter's insurance and your landlord raises your rent to cover the difference your rent goes up so no matter what this affects you and now get this no company will write him a new policy because he has an open and existing claim with united casualty that's now with the florida guarantee insurance association okay and he says he can't even get anybody on the phone to try and close this claim either so he's just sitting there in limbo so here's his situation he can't get a new policy so what's going to happen is his mortgage lender is going to get a policy in place for him and it's probably going to cost a whole lot more than he was previously paying and chances are he won't even be covered because usually with these type of policies that the mortgage companies put into place it only covers their end of the loss but yet you're the one paying for the policy so it's a terrible deal for the homeowner to fall under one of these policies and it should really be 
the last resort, which in this guy's case, it is the last resort because there's no other insurance company that will touch him right now. Now, luckily this guy's not retired yet. He still works and he makes good money as a food safety consultant. And he also says that his property taxes have gone up as well. Utilities have gone up. And within just a few years, all these things have gone up. What have I been saying, guys? What have I been telling you about all of this? That's exactly what's happening. Now, I realize that this is mainly a Florida problem in terms of the size of all these increases with the insurance and property taxes and all this. But make no mistake, there's many of you who have written me in the comments saying this has happened to you in Colorado, in Arizona, in California, and different areas of the country. People are being affected by this. The numbers and the percentage of increases may not be as severe, but the story remains the same and it still can be a big problem for people that are already struggling to afford things. And even this guy that doesn't have an insurance policy right now, look at this. Three years ago, he was paying $35.95 a year for his premium up until his latest policy with United, until they went uh, insolvent, it went up to $62.81. That's practically double, okay? And I've heard stories of people having it triple. In fact, guys, uh, my birthday is coming up soon um, in May and I'm gonna head over to Venice, Florida, which is where my grandpa lives, and I'm gonna see him again. I'm gonna ask him about his insurance because I remember last time I talked to him, he was saying that his insurance basically tripled, and uh, I'll see what he has to say about this as well because he owns a house over there, and everyone's getting affected by this, so it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say about this too. This last guy here has really gotten reamed from the insurance companies from all different angles because before this actually, he had a problem with the roof and he needed about $55,000 in repairs and he ended up having to hire an attorney and they ended up settling and only gave him 32,000. So imagine you have almost 60 grand in repairs for the roof and the insurance company gives you 32 grand. Like you're out $28,000, man. Like, can you cover that? I want everyone to think if you're planning on coming here and moving to Florida, and Cape Coral is a very reasonably priced area compared to a lot of areas in Florida, guys. So think about this. If you're gonna be coming to Florida and you're gonna buy a $400,000 house, can you afford these type of situations? Because if you can't, you better run the other direction because this is a problem that is just seemingly getting worse for now and it's probably gonna to continue to get worse before it gets better. So people need to really consider this as a real threat if you're potentially looking at moving to Florida right now because this is a problem that really didn't exist just a few years ago. This is kind of a, a new COVID problem that popped up during the pandemic and uh, just coincidentally, we had one of the worst hurricanes to ever hit the state hit last year that is just exacerbating this and making it worse. Because this guy explains in the story, and you can go read it for yourself, these guys decided to come down to Florida and make their retirement here because his wife's already retired and things like the warm weather and the canals and the boating and all this stuff, the beaches, is what drew them here, just like so many other people. And he was always telling all his friends and family like, yeah, I'm gonna die here in this house. This is like my forever home. And now people that thought that that was gonna be the case, might have to seriously reconsider if that's going to be their future, just simply because they may not be able to afford it anymore. So this is especially important for people who are looking at retiring in Florida. It's important for people that are looking to move here that don't really have the cash to pay for these things. Like if you're moving here broke, this is no longer the place for you guys, unfortunately. like. It's not like it was 10, 15 years ago when I moved here and you could just, you know, move here with a few thousand dollars in your pocket and make it. You know, it's not that simple anymore. Now, here's another story of a guy in a similar situation as the last one, but it's a little bit different because this guy is actually considering just giving up and selling his home 
in order to get out of this whole mess. And he was paying only $1,400 a year. He has a newer home and he's up in the Tallahassee area, which is not an area right off the top of your head. You would think that insurance premiums would be through the roof because it's not on the coast. But there was a hailstorm, and he had to make a claim with his insurance, the United, okay? Then they went insolvent, same thing as the last guy. And in order to get a citizen's insurance policy, they made him do a four point inspection on the house, which includes the roof, the plumbing, the air conditioning. And they said, uh, your roof's 19 years old, you gotta replace it. His new insurance policy would actually be close to what he was paying before, the $1,400 a year, which is definitely not bad, but he needs to get the new roof. And he has to get flood insurance. It's gonna end up costing him more either way. And to get the new roof is 10 grand, which is cheap compared to the guy in Cape Coral He's pretty lucky. So this guy's saying, you know, I'm looking at just putting a for sale sign in the property and taking the money and going somewhere to like Georgia or the Carolinas or anywhere else where it's cheaper than here and I'm not gonna face this crazy ridiculous problem. And who could blame him? Apparently he only has 60 days to make this decision. He has 60 days until he has to decide if he's going to sell the house or get the policy with citizens. So there's like this time crunch element to it as well. So here's a quick rundown of what the average rates are here in Florida right now to give you an idea for, and these are just averages guys, so it can vary widely. Like for example, if you want to get uh, tenant insurance for renters, the average policy is about $200 per year, which is really not that expensive, but it can go as high as $13,000 a year from a company that covers just 12 premium condos in the state. So imagine it can be ranging between that, you know, $200 a year to $13,000 a year, depending on the place you're renting. Homeowners insurance can range anywhere from $346 a year up to $51,800 a year. And the average went from $2,900 to a little over $3,000. So if the average is $3,000, that's still not terrible. But I would be willing to say, guys, that most people are not gonna be paying the average unless you live in a very low risk area. If you want to cut these premiums down and have the lower insurance premiums, your best bet is to live more inland, you know, away from the coast in a higher elevation area where it's not as pr prone to flooding, things like that. That's how you're gonna get these lower premiums. But if you live anywhere near the coast, like over here, and that's like the main draw for most people in Florida, or even live by water like in Cape Coral. You know, it's not on the coast, but there's canals everywhere. That's a flood risk, okay? That causes problems, that can cost you extra. So you gotta think about all these things when you're gonna be buying or renting a house here. And these insurance companies are charging more because the average insured value of homes here went from 624,000 up to 641,000. And this is actually one of those times when owning a condo is somewhat beneficial because the average cost to insure a condo went from 1375 a year to 1419. That's the homeowner's insurance policy just for your unit, you know, not including the HOA insurance that's paid through your HOA dues. So it's considerably lower than a single family home. But that's the other interesting thing about all this is so many people like to argue that paying all these HOA fees is too expensive, it's a waste of money and all of this. Well, if you have a $4,000 a year insurance policy, what is that, like $380 a month on your house? And it doesn't include any type of yard maintenance or any other additional repairs that your house might need. So really, you're all, we're all in this together, guys. Like one way or another, you're gonna have to pay for things, okay? And you live in a house, you're gonna pay high, much higher insurance premiums. That combined with uh, the additional exposure and risk with repairs and all that. Live in a condo, you're gonna pay higher HOA dues that cover the building master policy, but have a lower policy for your own unit. So no matter what, we're all paying, okay? I know this video was longer than I usually go, but there's a lot of important stuff to cover here, guys. It's really important that people who are considering looking at buying or renting a place in Florida, just moving here for whatever reason, looks at these things because this can really turn your life upside down in a hurry if you don't know this stuff. I've had many of you write me saying, I was thinking about retiring in Florida. Now I'm looking somewhere else now that I know all this stuff, Michael. So thank you. So you're welcome. 
glad to help anyone who needed this information and if you enjoyed this video make sure you click the bell notification down below youtube will alert you every time i post a new video and if you don't want to wait check out my next one on the screen right over here and i'll see you in the next one